Legacy Board of Trustees to order at 6 p.m. on September 6, 2018. The purpose of this pre-meeting briefing is to conduct a briefing session with administrative staff regarding the posted agenda for the regular board meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. on September 6, 2018. That's today. For the record, all board members are present and um, we do conduct a quorum. Board members, do you have any questions regarding the consent agenda items? Uh, item number two. So, if there are no questions, Dr. Chapman, are there any reports by administration? Yes, ma'am. Dr. Warnock will now make a presentation. Sure. No. Uh, we just wanted to give an enrollment update to the Board of Trustees um, and to share just a celebration about pre-K. Um, we currently, compared to same date last year, we are up uh, 62 children in our early education program. That's our pre-four-year-old program. That is students that we're serving in PPCD for special education. 142 students over last year's enrollment in pre-K. 187 students uh, increase in kindergarten. Uh, we would attribute that largely to our signature programs. We also saw growth in sixth and ninth. We saw a decrease in uh, some other grade levels, not all. Uh, right now, we're looking at about a 275 to 300 increase in enrollment from last year. We have projected a flat enrollment trend. So uh, that's where uh, we currently stand. We also heard from uh, one of our principals who was the beneficiary of full day pre-K. She shared that last year out of the kindergarten class, there were 10 to 12 students who had letter and sound recognition of 20 or more letters in the kindergarten class. This year, that number was reversed. There are 10 students who do not have at least 20 letters and uh, sound recognition uh, in the kindergarten group, which is going to really accelerate. We're also seeing much more school-ready behavior uh, in our campuses that were served by full-day pre-K, which just helps to accelerate the learning trajectory. Uh, we know research shows us that that pre-K investment pays dividend over time, so this board is to be commended for the uh, vision to put that full-day pre-K into place and for your support of it. So that's, uh, that's our report. Thank you. Okay, so I'll, I want to talk just briefly about um, True North. So True North came in today, and they uh, met with all of the chiefs of police, and Is it, it's, uh, with the chiefs of police. Oh, we did this time with the various chiefs of police, and it was uh, very good in the sense of yeah. <laughs> From we right. need a safety minute. <laughs> And, and so what, what True North is doing at this point is they've gathered information, they've walked through and did assessments on all of the campuses, and, and again, like I say, met with the chiefs today. They're going to present a, a final report to uh, the administration in late to mid-October, and then we will have a report to the Board of Trustees on November 1st. Uh, we will go into closed session because it is based on safety and security, and there will be various recommendations that True North will present some of which three items that are going to be uh, immediate immediate needs that we need to consider as we move forward i will be providing you information over the course of the next uh, three to four weeks some of the conversations that we had today uh, are, are same some of the same conversations that i've had issues with whenever i first came in and so i'm going to walk the board through some of those and we may or may not be asking the board to make uh, an approval or a recommendation at that same meeting on November 1st. But I'll be providing you information along the way as we walk through the process. Um, we'll also be uh, sending the board information on where we are with TIF. And so some of the funds, what do we have allocated, where are some of the expenditures, I'll send that out to you uh, probably tomorrow. So you can kind of see where we are in that process. We'll talk a little bit about um, some items and property tonight during closed session as well, but that's just some information for you to be aware of. Our October board meeting is going to be substantially long, so I already sent you uh, many of those agenda items. Please start reading over those. If you have questions, I'll start submitting those, but that's just part one. I mean, it's going to be fairly lengthy. Um, and so if you can send me those that information at a later date, I'd appreciate it. And that's all I have. 
Do any board members have any questions? Anything you'd like more information on? No, thank you, Dr. Chapman. Um, with that, board members, we've reached the end of the agenda for the, this pre-meeting briefing, and we are adjourned at 6.06 p.m. So let's take a picture. Let's let's do our and we're going to go do our pictures and group picture, and we'll c gather for dinner at like 6.25. Mm -hmm. So between now and 6.25, we're going to go take photos that Dr. Chapman wants us to update. I like my 12-year-old picture best. Okay. <laughs> but, um, Angela fair. said I could have it yeah. for posterity's sake. Really well, to order at 7 p.m. on September 6, 2018. Board members, district staff members, and members of the audience, you are free to join me in standing as Ebony Wilson from the Office of Representative Ron Simmons provides a message followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Sally Derrick and the Pledge to the Texas Flag led by Randy Shackman. So I guess we'll start with the pledge. The prayer first, excuse me. Father God, we entreat you, your presence and your wisdom. God, for those individuals that have stepped up to volunteer their talents, gifts, and professional skills, I pray that you give them wisdom and unity. Father, bless their efforts in all they plan to do this school year. Bless their efforts to so they reflect your love to the children and those they serve. God, when there are challenges, cover them and give them a strong defense. God, we pray for your divine protection in every school, every vestibule, every hallway, and every cafeteria. Cover every student coming and going. Father, bless the teachers, give them inspiration to serve and continue to serve especially when it's challenging. Father, cover the school and administrators. Give them godly insight on how to lead. Let support pour in from every place, even places unexpected. God, we pray for peace, strength, and guidance. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Ms. Wilson and Ms. Derrick and Mr. Shackman. As a district, we dedicate all our efforts and resources to our goal of high achievement for each student. The board uses this goal to guide all deliberations, decisions, and actions. You will get to see all deliberations, decisions, and actions of the board in open session, with the exception of some items which may be discussed in a closed session as stipulated in the Texas Government Code, Section 551, commonly known as the Open Meetings Law. For the record, all board members are present. We constitute a quorum and may conduct business on behalf of the district. As required by board policy BBD local, let the minutes reflect that all board members are well on the way to completing or exceeding the required hours of continuing education for the current reporting period ending May 4, 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, before moving on to the next agenda item, I would like to remind you that the board encourages comments from citizens of the district and from district employees. Anyone wishing to speak either as an individual or as a representative of a group may do so during agenda item number three, audience for guests. Please submit your request to do so on one of the forms that is just outside the boardroom door. You may place the completed form in the box beside it, or you may hand them to our administrative assistant, Ms. Sharon Scribner, over here at this table. When the board addresses at agenda item number three, audience for guests, you will be invited to the podium to speak to the board. The next agenda item is item number two, special presentations, and really my favorite, and recognitions, and item number 2A, Teacher of the Nine Weeks. Dr. Chapman? Yes, it's a great honor to recognize our Teachers of the Nine Weeks. We have 12 teachers tonight that we're going to recognize. Every nine weeks, we, each campus will select a Teacher of the Nine Weeks. 
At the end of the third nine weeks, those teachers will be eligible for teacher of the year. We'll have a banquet at the end of the year, an elementary and a secondary. At that time, we'll choose the district elementary teacher of the year and the secondary teacher of the year, which will then move on for the regional teacher of the year. So it's a great honor to have you here tonight. I will say, if you haven't seen your picture out front, so all 38 teachers of the nine weeks are out front. They'll stay out there every nine weeks. At the end of the year, our teacher of the year will stay up from May all the way until September. So I just want to congratulate you. Thank you for all that you do. We respect you greatly, and we look forward to honoring you tonight. Thank you. Dr. Chapman, board members, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here tonight. My name is Jose Ramos. I am the principal of Blair Elementary, and we are here to honor our teacher of the nine weeks, Ms. Iris Ramos. Iris, please stand. <clears throat> Iris is one of our fourth grade math teachers. Uh, Iris has been in education 19 years, 15 of which have been in CFB, so lucky us. Uh, <clears throat> there's many things I can say about Iris that makes her a recipient of this great honor, uh, but in the short time I've worked with her, uh, the biggest thing I've noticed is her perceptiveness as a teacher. Uh, she can work a room. She has great situational awareness. Uh, so she not only knows kids physically where they're on the room, she has a finger on their mental pulse, both emotionally and academically. So thank you, Iris, for everything, we, with everything you do. <laughs> Good evening, board members, family members. Um, my name is Eva Medina Walker. I'm proud principal of Blanton Elementary. And I'm honored this evening to introduce our Blanton nine week teacher of the week of the nine weeks, Maria Garcia. <laughs> Maria Garcia is a bilingual third grade teacher and she has been a teacher for seven years and has taught all those years at Blanton. A good teacher is like a candle, and it consumes itself to light the way for others. And Ms. Garcia has been that candle for the last seven years. Maria is a kind and loving teacher with a very calming presence who instills confidence in her students and dedicates her time and effort to ensure they are successful. She sets high expectations for herself and invests the time to hone her practice. She also has amazing organizational skills that can rival Martha Stewart's. <laughs> Most important, her love for her students, dedication to her profession, and big heart are just a few of the reasons why she's deserving of being Blanton's Teacher of the Nine Weeks. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Chapman. Uh, I would like to recognize Susie Hernandez as teacher of the nine weeks for Carrollton Elementary. <laughs> Susie is a fourth grade bilingual teacher with us. She's been in education for six years, has been with us for one year. She is a dedicated teacher with an amazing heart. Her students love her and her colleagues love her. Quoting one of her colleagues, Susie is dedicated to holding her students to a high level of instruction. Her expectations allow her students to think critically and problem solve throughout the day. She is an excellent teacher and our campus is lucky and blessed to have her. Thank you, Susie. Good evening, Dr. Chapman, President Klein, and board members. My name is Luz Soto Dimas, and I am the, uh, have the honor of being the principal at Central Elementary. Tonight, we ha are here to honor Olga Rodriguez, our fourth grade bilingual teacher, as our teacher of the nine weeks. <laughs> Olga 
Olga is on her eighth year as an educator and all in CFB. She is a proud product of CFB attending Farmers Branch Elementary, Vivian Field Middle School, and R.L. Turner High School. <laughs> Olga demonstrates qualities of a true leader, her willingness and go-getter attitude to assist colleagues and all, as well as all students, is seen on a daily basis. Olga seeks to provide what is best for all students. Central is honored and lucky to have such a magnificent team member. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Dr. Chapman. My name is Kim Chow Jackson, Principal at Country Place Elementary. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce to you to our teacher of the nine weeks, Kesley Savage. <laughs> Kesley is starting her fifth year as a teacher and her third year in CFB at Country Place Elementary. She is a kindergarten teacher and a leader to her team. This year, we started the year with 80 kindergarten students and three teachers. Yes, Kesley was instrumental to her team by being supportive, taking initiative, and doing what needed to be done to manage 80 kindergartners. If you've seen that video circling on Facebook that has all the little kittens and trying to herd all the little kittens, that's exactly what the kinder team looked like. Um, it was no surprise to us that she was voted Country Places Teacher of the Year for the nine weeks. So we want to say congratulations and we appreciate you, Kesley. Good evening, Dr. Chapman, members of the board. I'm Lisa Williams, principal at Davis Elementary. We're honoring tonight Mr. Jesus Prieto. <laughs> 25 years ago, Mr. Prieto exchanged his white lab coat in Peru for a white board in a classroom. And the last four years of those 25 have been at Davis in CFB. From his parents, Mr. Prieto learned a strong work ethic respect, responsibility, humility, and compassion. From his sister, who teaches at Carrollton Elementary, patience, passion, and self-sacrifice. His classroom is an adorable fairyland where children love to learn about learning, just like <clears throat> their teacher. Mr. Prieto's <clears throat> father is also a member of our family at Davis, and he gives hours and hours of volunteer um, time to us. So with the forces of the Prieto family, combined with the Davis CFB family, all possibilities are limitless. Thank you, Mr. Prieto. Good evening, my name is Susan Machayo and I have the honor of serving as the principal at Farmers Branch Elementary. Tonight we are here to honor Mandy Cluley, our physical education instructor, as our teacher of the first nine weeks. <laughs> Mandy is in her 20th year as an educator and 11 of those years have been serving CFB students. Coach Cluley creates diverse learning experiences for our students swimming, skating, volleyball, and basketball, just to name a few. For six years now, Mandy has been partnering with the athletes and coaches of our feeder schools, Vivian Field Middle School and Arl Turner High School, for many sports clinics throughout the year. We are fortunate to have such a great relationship with our feeder athletic program, and we have Mandy to thank for developing and fostering this relationship among our schools. Thank you, Coach Clutely. Good evening, Dr. Chapman, Mrs. Klein, and members of the board. I'm Robin Campbell, the proud principal of Bernice Chapman Freeman Elementary. 
What a joy it is to join you tonight to recognize Freeman's Choice for Teacher of the First Nine Weeks, Abigail Gunn. In Abby's first three years at Freeman, she served as a third grade math and science teacher. When Freeman was chosen to be a Spark STEM Academy, Abby jumped at the opportunity to interview for the position. Since being selected, she has led our team through countless STEM activities. This summer, her and her family worked so many hours to transform four of our classrooms into engaging maker spaces. Her classroom fosters critical thinking, all while incorporating science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Just within the first few weeks of school, our students, K through five, are already exploring 21st century skills to solve real world problems. We invite each of you to come to our school and visit our stellar program and see Abby in action. Without a doubt, the Freeman family believes that Abby is no doubt so deserving of this honor. Good evening, Dr. Chapman and members of the board. My name is Lori Parker, and I have the privilege of serving as the principal at Freneau Elementary. And this evening, I am proud to honor our fabulous third grade math and science teacher, Ms. Anita Faust. When we were voting on the teacher of the nine weeks, it was hands down, no doubt, Mrs. Faust was our winner. Not just because she was my first, my second grade teammate at Janie Stark Elementary, where we taught second grade together for many years. Mrs. Faust has three children who she is very proud of, and her grandchildren that are, her children are CFB graduates, and she is very quick to tell you that. Mrs. Faust is starting her 36th year in Carrollton Farmers Branch. When asked how many years at Furno, her response was, I don't know. <laughs> so she also was asked about her, um, sorry, the Furneau staff is proud to honor Ms. Faust who works tirelessly, tirelessly to ensure that all students not only love math but are successful. Anita works day and night trying to figure out problem solving and trying to help her students how they can all ensure and be good learners. She cares about her students, loves her family, and loves Furneau. We thank you Anita for all that you've done for CFB. Good evening, <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Chapman and board members. I'm Shanaj Ahmad, principal of RE Good Ivy World School. This evening, I am so proud to recognize our first Teacher of the Year nominee from our Gator Swamp, Tara Jones. <laughs> Tara has been impacting the lives of our precious PPCD students for the past five years. Most people don't realize that special education teachers are really angels disguised as extraordinary human beings, and that could not be more true of Ms. Jones. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that we are in the presence of a celebrity. We refer to Ms. Jones as the real life Miss Frizzle. So if you, if you have ever seen an episode of the Magic School Bus, Miss Frizzle takes her students on adventures, and that's exactly what Miss Jones does. And she actually drives the bus in the summer for special <laughs> education students. So, there you are. Miss Jones, congratulations on this very well deserved honor. From our littlest gators to our biggest gators, we could not be more lucky to have you in our family. Dr. Chapman, members of the board, my name is Debbie Williams, principal at Kent Elementary. Tonight we recognize Joanne Jennings as our teacher of the nine weeks.
<coughs> Ms. Jennings has been a teacher for 28 years and has been a Kent Cardinal for the last 12 years. She is an outstanding math, fifth grade math teacher. Joanne is described by her colleagues as being all in, a real difference maker, dedicated, confident, patient, fun, relevant, involved, school spirited, genuine, analytical, a cheerleader, caring, a friend, a hero, and this is my favorite, renowned. <laughs> Not sure what that's about. <laughs> Congratulations, Joanne. The staff and students at Kent love you. Good evening, Dr. Chapman, President Klein, and members of the school board. My name is Stephanie Lopez, and I am the principal at Tom Landry Elementary School. It is my honor to introduce fifth grade teacher Brittany Phillips as Landry's teacher of the first nine weeks. Ms. Phillips began her time in CFB in 2013 as a student teacher at Carrollton Elementary and at River Chase Elementary. She began teaching at Landry five years ago in January of 2014. Here are the many reasons Ms. Phillips was chosen as a teacher of the nine weeks as stated by her peers. She always wants the best for her students, keeps her cool even in difficult or trying situations, strives to make her students feel loved and cared for, one of the most patient and consistent teachers I know, willing to go the extra mile for what her kids need, and her management is off the charts. But I think one key, a colleague sums it up best, she rocks. So thank you, Ms. Phillips, for rocking at Landry. Now I would like to um, welcome Danny Modisette with from Into Learning to present the Bush Middle School staff with the school's Transform Transforming Learning um, Campus Award. And will the Barbara Bush Campus please come forward. Dr. Chapman, trustees, I'm honored to be here to share in your recognition of Barbara Bush Middle School this evening. Barbara Bush is one of just 31 elite campuses throughout Texas to be given the 2018 Schools Transforming Learning Distinction by the Principals Institute. It's awarded to campuses that are making exceptional strides in their efforts to provide innovative learning opportunities for students. Barbara Bush Middle School was recognized for the innovative steps it is taking through the Dynamic Learning Project to embrace an all-inclusive technological learning environment and to truly transform organizationally to detract students, allowing each student to learn at the very highest level. Barbara Bush was selected uh, from the over 400 of the schools represented by principals that have come through the Principals Institute over the last eight years. About a dozen of them come from Carrollton Farmers Branch, great leaders. So we're really thrilled to be a part of this. Congratulations. Dr. Chapman, I wanted to tell you I really enjoyed our introduction to our Teachers of the Nine Weeks. I'd like to thank the campuses for helping us do this. It, I think it'll be a great program to help recognize some of our teachers at the regional level even in a way to 
really continue to do recognition of our staff, which we appreciate so much as board members and all of our audience. So thank y'all for taking the time. Some of what we learn about y'all invigorates us to continue to maintain the drive. And I wish I had Martha Stewart's organization skills. <laughs> so, um, and some of the other things that were said, but um, board members, any other comments? Um, Congratulations. Thank y'all so much for being here. I'd like to remind everybody about the audience for guests. If you'd like to fill out the form, please leave it out there or bring it to Ms. Scrivener. And um, with that, well, I'd like to go ahead and take a brief recess. It is currently so. Oh, excuse me. This <laughs> Shelly Brown, would you like to read announcements? I would. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oops. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I'm going to give you a, a few brief announcements and then invite a couple of special guests up to share some announcements that are happening around CFB. R.L. Turner High School will host a college night for students in grades 10th through 12th grades on September the 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, all students in CFB ISD are um, invited. Parents are also invited to attend the event with their ch um, students. Representatives from over 100 colleges and universities will be in attendance. For more information, visit our district's website. CFBISD is launching a new way to communicate with our families. The system is called Parent Square. Through Parent Square, you will receive phone calls, text messages, emails, and posts from the district, um, your child's campus, and your child's teacher. Parent Square provides a simple and safe way for everyone at school to connect. You can use Parent Square on any device, and you can download the free mobile app on Android or on, um, Apple, on your Apple device. You can find out more information on Parent Square at parentsquare.com or, or on the district's website, cfbisd.edu. If you have any questions about Parent Square, um, please feel free to call the district's help desk. They can help you through that. I would now like to invite the council PTA president, Meredith, Meredith Watson, to give an update on PTA. Dr. Chapman, members of the board, thank you so much for having us tonight. <clears throat> My name is Meredith Watson, and I'm this year's CFB ISD Council PTA President. Council PTA's goal matches that of the district, high achievement for each student. We believe that the involvement of our PTA leaders and our parents as PTA members contribute to this goal, and we look forward to developing events and information that ensure our parents are engaged with our schools. I thought I'd take a moment to highlight some of the great back-to-school events some of our local PTAs hosted or assisted with. Blayback Middle School is hosting a fall social tomorrow night. Furno Elementary is hosting their family barbecue picnic on September 11th. And McCoy Elementary is hosting a flag football game on September 21st. Additionally, as part of our leadership development efforts, Council PTA leaders are hosting an officer and chair training on September 15th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., where all of our local campus leaders will have the opportunity to learn more about their position on the PTA board. For parent education, Council PTA is partnering with the district on a program titled A Parent's Guide to Anxiety and Depression, What's Typical for Children and Teens and What's Not. This unique education event is taking place Wednesday, September 12th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the ESDC building. I encourage you all to go. It's got really great information. Special recognition goes out to Country Place Elementary PTA for receiving our National PTA School of Excellence Award for 2018 and through 2020, recognizing their past and continued efforts on working with administration to improve communication with parents. There were about three pages of schools from Texas that won this national award, and Carrollton Farmers Branch, or Country Place Elementary is the only one from CFB to actually win it, so that was a big honor for them. Our next regular council PTA meeting is September 19th at 6.30 p.m. in the ESDC Texas room. Y'all come on by. And then we look forward to a great year of partnering with the district on our collective goal of high achievement for each student. And thank you for your continued support of PTA. Thank you, Meredith, for that report. I would now like to invite Sharon Escher with the Association for Gifted and Talented to give a brief report. 
thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sharon Escher, and I'm the current president of CFB AGT, which is the Association for the Gifted and Talented. I'm very happy to be here today, tonight, and thank you for the Board of Trustees and Dr. Chapman for the opportunity to share some important news with you and the community. CFB is an excellent school district with focus on serving the individual from profound gifted to special ed. Serving this wide range of student needs requires commitment, caring, skilled resources. I thought you would like to be most interested in knowing that last night, Advanced Academic Services hosted an all district informal night for families with A students in, in, in grades K to five and over 150 parents participated with interest and enthusiasm. The families appreciated meeting Dr. Schaefer and her advanced academic services team. CFB ISC parents are engaged. I'm also very excited to share that you are welcome to attend two major upcoming events. One is on September 26th. AGT, our organization, will host our first community resource fair. This event is geared towards students K to 12 and their families to learn more about opportunities within our school district. Many community businesses and services will be there as well. Several CFB academies and stellar programs. And a few <laughs> examples include, we have uh, Newman Smith High School's International Business Academy, Arbel Turner Biomed Academy, Branch View High School IB program, the Stella Dance Academy present, we have the Destination Imagination, Farmer's Brands Community Garden Classes, the Firehouse Theater, the Morning Meteorite Museum, the Texas Center for Proton Therapy, Lego Inspired Engineering Classes for Kids eight to K-8, to the Shannon Martial Arts Team, All About Animals, and the list just continues. Um, <clears throat> another important event that we are hosting is on together with Council, PTA, and Advanced Academic Services is on October 17 at Newman Smith High School, and the whole community is invited. The title of this event is Middle School Transition, Discover CFB Middle School Options for Your Student and Meet Outstanding Principal. It continues our collaboration with Advanced Academic Services and Council PTA for the benefit of the entire community. It's geared towards parents of elementary students this focus on third, fourth, and fifth grade, moving up into middle school. This program will showcase our wonderful middle school principals, their teams, and what each middle school campus in CFB has to offer. The time for this event is from 6 to 8 p.m. at Newman Smith High School Auditorium. And this program evolved actually following last year's program on transition to high school. This year we have the transition for, from elementary to middle school. With best wishes and a continuous great start into the new exciting year 2018-19 to the ex entire team, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Sharon. That concludes our district announcements. Thank you, Ms. Brown, Ms. Watson, and Ms. Escher. We appreciate your announcements. With that, are we ready to take a break? Okay, so, sorry. Um, my watch says it's 7.34, so we'll take a brief recess until 7.45. Thank y'all. This meeting of the Carrollton Farmers Branch Board, ISD Board of Trustees is called back to order at 7.47 p.m. The next item on the agenda is audience for guests. Ms. Grivner, do we have any audience for guests? So we will proceed to our next agenda item, which is item number four, consent agenda. The consent agenda is a mechanism that the board uses to approve a number of routine items together with a single vote. In compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, the public notice for this meeting includes the list of all consent agenda items, and the board has been provided ample information about these items in advance. Prior to any action taken on the consent agenda, board members may request withdrawal of individual items for clarification or discussion. Board members, are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda at this time? 
Board members, hearing nothing to be removed, do I have any action? Mr. Ramos. Make a movement. Uh, I move that we uh, accept the consent agenda item as presented. So I have a motion for Mr. Ramos. Ms. Valenzuela. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. That is unanimous, seven in favor. So this brings us to item number five, non-action items for discussion and consideration. 5A is report on district construction projects. Mr. Finley and Ms. Tillman. Yeah, so first of all, uh, Mr. Finley is about to give a presentation. I sent you some information today on the dollar amounts for, for the TIF. And so at this time, Mr. Finley is going to give you a presentation to show you where we are with the current construction projects. Thank you, Dr. Chapman, Ms. Klein, board members. I am pleased to be with you tonight to share where we are on both construction and destruction projects. Um, I'll begin with the construction side, a little more exciting. Um, we are currently in the process of receiving bids in some form for each of these projects that, are, that we will review tonight. And we're anticipating bringing those bids and uh, GMPs or guaranteed maximum prices back to the board in October as a recommendation for approval. The first project we're going to look at is our new multi-purpose facility built at our <coughs> Irving site. As a reminder, Balfour Beatty was selected as the construction manager at risk for this project. What you're looking at is a floor plan superimposed over at the site plan. Let's see if I can get my arrow going here. To orient you, it is directly across the street from La <coughs> Valita Elementary School, right there on the other side of La Valita Boulevard. The area, the big area with the big three rectangles to the left is actually the new banquet hall facility. And behind that is a culinary arts uh, kitchen and a small cafe. To the other side of the property, other side of the building is actually gonna house our new technology learning center staff and our, importantly, our network operating center. The size of the building is approximately 50,000 square feet. And the, the banquet hall piece, those, those rectangles again, they can open up into a very large meeting space or smaller meeting spaces with, again, smaller breakout spaces there adjacent to the technology learning center. So it has a lot of functionality and flexibility. This is an outside view of the same project. You're now looking southwest across that courtyard at the front of the banquet hall center. And so to the left again is where the, the knock and the uh, learning center would be located. Again, this is a courtyard and the uh, grassy area out in front of the building. I'll move on to the Landry project. Again, for this project, Balfour Beatty was selected as the construction manager at risk, and this is a very large renovation addition project for our Landry um, uh, Fine Arts Academy. So we're really excited about this. Uh, this project, the area that you see in yellow is actually new construction. So you see a classroom wing, which consists of six classrooms, and then you also see a new gymnasium and the reason we are building a new gymnasium is we're renovating the existing gymnasium into the campus's fine arts center so that includes dance space music space and other spaces the other areas of the building are going to be renovated so if you can recall or if you remember this campus is divided in very strict four classroom pods um, which doesn't lend itself to the very unstrict nature of elementary campuses in terms of grade designation so we moved away to some degree to that without having to go around. Um, these pods are, are now less separated, so corridors actually connected, so it's a much more flexible floor plan. That area in the middle is actually more collaboration space and flexibility space for the campus. And again, the new construction there um, in yellow is a new classroom wing. The total square footage for the new construction is about 17,000 square feet. 
and the renovated space is 70,000 square feet. This project is actually going to be divided into two specific phases, a new construction phase, which will be initiated first, and then the renovation phase, which will be in initiated second. This is an exterior view of the Landry project at the front. Um, the classroom wing would be stretching to the left and you see the new entrance and the new announcement. Again, we're excited about this as this is facilitating our move to a, the new Imagine Fine Arts Academy in a very comprehensive way. The next project we'll look at is the uh, combination of the merging of the McLaughlin Strickland campus. For this campus, the uh, construction manager at risk is Kibler Construction. And this campus, again, includes some minor innovations. Unlike the Landry Project, this is one of our newer campuses that's in better shape. And so there's less renovations to be had. But you see those showing up at the library, which is in yellow, and the science room, which is in orange. This also has a uh, new construction wing, which you see in blue, which is a classroom. That's a two-story wing. And then the, uh, the purple color is the new makerspace two-story piece for this campus. Um, this campus actually serves a two, two purposes primarily. One, it does address the new Spark STEM Academy that's going to be housed in this campus, but it also addresses operational efficiency in that we have actually reduced the number of campuses in the district by one, and so all the efficiency that goes along with that uh, follows this project. This is a view of the outside of that project. You're looking at the two-story makerspace there. <laughs> And then the brick to the left is our new two-story classroom addition. Now we move on to the very exciting deconstruction piece of my presentation. So we're going to be looking at the three demo projects, again, that we actually received bids today on. And we're in the process of reviewing those and negotiating those bids. Uh, in each of these projects, they have very similar characteristics. It's a, it's a pretty large-scale demolition project, which always includes a large-scale abatement project. And so it, you have to, in, have to employ both a, a demolition crew and abatement crew. It has to be monitored and all those other um, things that go along with that type of project. This is the Science Resource Center located on Valley View. The yellow marked area is actually the building that's going to be demoed. And the blue is actually the extent of the whole site. We are in the process of negotiating and <coughs> resolving exactly what the demo portion of that would be with Farmers Branch. It's going to be some portion of the parking lot will be demoed and some portion will, will more than likely remain. Anything that is demoed in each of these three projects that I'm going to show you is going to be returned to multi-use green space. It's actually the language they use, which will be irrigated also. So that is the Science Resource Center demo project. This is the uh, McLaughlin Elementary demo. Again, same kind of concept. The yellow line here outlines the exact extent of our demolition. So in this project, we're demoing the building, obviously, and all the parking structures that go along with it. Again, to be returned to multi-use green space that is irrigated. Uh, the two blue uh, squares are two existing playgrounds that will remain. They're in good shape there. And then the last project is the demolition of the Montgomery Elementary School that, as you all are aware, has been sitting empty for quite a number of years, so we're thrilled to get this building down. Um, that's Blair you see right above that. We are saving all the, pro all the parking and driveways um, to serve Blair Elementary. And then, again, you can see the extents of the demo by the yellow outline. So we're, we're demoing the building and the parking lot there to the south of the building. So that concludes my very brief presentation. I will sure answer any questions that I can. Board members, do you have any questions? Mr. Shackman. <coughs> Mr. Finley, do you have? <coughs> oh, yeah, we have to push those buttons. Uh, any thought process on the timelines? I and, do. And how this will impact you know, classroom space and in-class time? Um, so, the, the, two, the two projects I, Mr. Shack, I'm assuming you're referring to is our two renovations at right, the elementary right. schools. So, that's part of, the, part of the reasoning behind having a construction manager at risk, because okay. what we do is negotiate a specific 
phasing of those projects. We will do the majority of the dirty work, so to speak, during the summertime, and then we will be working um, with the campus specifically on how we relocate kids if needed for the other phases. Landry in particular is important because in the phasing of that is important because we are the new the new um, classrooms will be built and completed prior to the renovation so we'll have space to move kids in and out. And so there'll be components. That is yet to be worked out, but that's going to be one of the first phases we do um, for for but it, Strickland's a much easier project because the renovation is small enough to be accomplished we believe in the summertime months. So we want to minimize any disruption obviously to the instructional um, going on to the campus as well. Okay. And I'll be bringing some ideas to the board on the Landry project as it is a renovation and an addition. So we'll be talking to you a little bit uh, further in the next probably couple of weeks but there are some ideas that, that we've been talking about internally that I'll be providing to you as, as some potential options in the near future. Great. Ms. Valenzuela. I apologize if I missed it, but what was the square footage on the makerspace at McLaughlin Strickland? So you didn't miss that? <laughs> I, I can give you the overall square footage. I don't have that specific square footage, but I have no problem giving that to you. Okay. Um, the, the approximate square footage of the entire new construction is 21,000 feet. Um, the building itself is about 80,000 square feet, the existing building, but the renovation component of that is fairly small. That's mainly a new construction project. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Could you go back to the La Valida Street project? What do you call that one? The multi-purpose building. The <clears throat> multi-purpose building? Sure. You, we're talking about the banquet areas, and you were saying behind them, and I'm trying to figure out where behind is. Okay, is yeah. it that skinny strip? Yeah, the dark, the dark the print. Oh, it's the dark print is the behind? And where is the elementary school that is across the street? And where is the North Arrow? No. <laughs> oh, I couldn't see around there. Okay. <laughs> well, I could have looked up here. I was just kind of, I was having a hard time getting oriented. So I have a question on Landry. The nice picture after the first picture of Landry talked about a new entrance. Uh -huh. And can you go back to where the new entrance might be? On That's the other picture. Sure. Yeah, where is that? Okay. It's a shaded area, so if you, <laughs> I'll try to, let me just point out. <laughs> so the current entrance is. Oh, okay. So it's just they refresh up the existing entrance. Okay. And then, um, what is beside the new gymnasium in yellow? Is that like right here. restrooms or? Oh, okay. And that's not existing. No. It's and then uh, another question: When you go past the six classrooms, what's that at the end of them? So secure vegetable yeah, type absolutely. situation. Sure. Okay, and then um, I just had a question you may remember off the top of your head. Strickland, the orange was what? I'm a little worried too. One more. <laughs> there you go. And then the library is just re librarying The library went about right here. So oh. Expand the library That's very helpful to understand because I always like to kind of know what's going on. And we had been there last year for a meeting in the fall, 
and we saw the book fair going on in the library, so I was like, so what, what's going on here in the library? So I appreciate the information. Board members, any other questions? Okay. Um, on the cafe in the operations center, so what hap is happening, is that a replacement of our Newman Smith Cafe in Culinary Arts, or is this just another space for the students? It is not a replacement. It would be part of a potential strand expansion, <coughs> and Dr. Warnock, jump in if you'd like sure. to correct me. <laughs> so we've talked about two different options. We did a market study, career forecasting, what the labor market uh, is going to be doing through 2030. Uh, here in the Metroplex and hospitality is a growing area uh, and so we're looking at two possibilities and maybe a hybrid of that that we have additional culinary programming at other schools um, that could then be a capstone experience that they're either having classes they're you know providing transportation there for coursework during the day or that that becomes the capstone for juniors and seniors and we have on campus freshman sophomore classes and then we have students that are running the facility uh, and the events that are hosted there so it would be part of our CTE expansion okay. and, and I just want to say one thing so so next week we're meeting with the Commissioner again to talk about certifications and so I want you to understand whenever you hear the word culinary arts and you look across there and you see that certification is not part of the CCMR please note that we're not calling it it's not gonna be part of the culinary arts it's gonna be called part of Tourism and hospitality certification, not the culinary art piece. Just FYI. Okay. So, thank you very much, Mr. Finley, and for your presentation and for Dr. Coleman's help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. So, um, with that, we'll move on to item number six items for discussion and or action. We didn't have any items for 6A removed from the consent. So we'll go ahead and go to 6B, consider approval of election services contract Dallas County elections. Dr. Chapman? Yeah, so the, today I sent you some information on uh, uh, Dallas County, and at this time, uh, Ms. Tillman will provide more information. Yes, um, the school district generally contracts with Dallas County elections to service our Dallas County voters, as well as our Denton County voters at our May elections as well as at our November election where we have to actually contract with both because Dallas County cannot um, perform the joint election functions at a November election. Um, so we have a contract that we uh, submitted to you all. Our legal counsel has reviewed this contract and made changes. Um, the contracts are not completely finished in terms of the attachments, which is one of the most important elements because the attachments provide the costs for the district. Um, but those are all still being worked out. Early voting places have not yet been finalized, which drives the cost. Um, so we are waiting on a final number. If you look back at what we spent at the last November election that we participated in, which was November of 2016, our portion from Dallas County was approximately 88,000. Um, we've received a very first estimate from Dallas of um, 60, approximately 68,000. And then we are also going to have our ballot on a separate ballot, which will cost additional funds. Um, so right now we are up to um, about 74,000, but I expect we'll probably be closer to the amount we played um, in November of 2016 when we get the final estimates. Um, we are asking that you approve the contract as submitted. Um, and we have given you draft agenda language to authorize um, Dr. Chapman to execute the agreement, um, but you're approving substantially the form and content as we presented it. And I just want to touch on one thing, and the reason we're talking about a separate, separate ballot, because if someone were to go in there and check all parties, and that's on the back side, then they don't vote on the bond. So therefore, we're asking for a second ballot, so they'll hand them a second sheet of paper. So just know that there will be an additional expense, and that's the reason for that. Board members, this item is marked for action. Is there a motion to be considered? Explain. I have, we'd like to 
make a motion. I'm going to ask a question about making that motion. Ms. Tillman, does it make any sense for us to give you... Uh, Back up. Does it make any sense that this motion would include a, a dollar amount or will it be sufficient for us to just use the verbiage uh, approving the contract? I, I would hesitate to put a dollar amount just because we we don't know what I the know final we don't amount know, but it, did we want to give an up to or okay, no. yeah. perfect. Well, then I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, I move that the board approve entering into an election services agreement with Dallas County Elections Administrator for the bond election to be held on November 6th of this year and hereby to authorize the superintendent to execute an agreement on behalf of the school district that is substantially similar in form and content to the agreement presented to the board. Thank you, Mr. Shackman. I have a motion for Mr. Shackman. I saw Ms. Derrick raise her hand. Would you like to second? So we have a second from Ms. Derrick. Um, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. All those against, please indicate by raising your hand. What'd you say? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those against, please raise your hand. So oh, there is. I you said it no. With a vote of seven in favor and zero against, the motion carries. Um, do we need to do Denton County? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, so two, So item C, consider approval of election agreement and contract for election services for Denton County Elections Administrator. Yeah, so uh, same verse basically with Dallas, but um, Ms. Tillman, do you have anything you want to add to the Denton piece? Just want to add that the Denton is substantially less. Um, again, in November of 2016, our share ended up being just under 25,000. The first estimate we have received from Denton is just under 30,000. Um, for this particular particular election. This draft form has also been reviewed by our legal counsel at this time. Thank you. Board members, this agenda item is marked for action. Is there a motion to be considered? Ms. Tillman, are we also anticipating a second ballot for the Denton County? They have not started um, providing us with proofs yet, so we, we don't know where we're going to fall on their ballot at this time. Okay. But, but if we end up in the same situation, we will request um, the same. Okay. So board members, um, is there a motion to be considered? Mr. Matthews? I move that the board approve entering into an election agreement and contract for election services with the Denton County Elections Administrator for the bond election to be held on November 6, 2018, and authorize the superintendent to execute an agreement on the school district's behalf that is substantially similar in form and content to the agreement presented to the board. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Do we have a second? Ms. Babacek? So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any further questions or anything you'd like to ask staff? So without any more questions, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. All those opposed, with a vote of seven in favor and zero against the motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, our next agenda item is 6D, consider approval of pre-kindergarten and kindergarten school furniture and instructional supplies. Dr. Chapman? Yes, yeah, great, great problem to have uh, with, <laughs> with the gaining more, more, more kiddos in our kindergarten uh, classrooms and so at this time Dr. Warnock will present. Sure we shared with the board in the pre-meeting that we've had an increase in 62 students over last year in our early education numbers 142 student increase in pre-kindergarten and 187 student increase in kindergarten. We had anticipated some growth and had planned last spring and the board had approved the purchase of five additional classroom sets. We put one of those into play um, in the spring as we needed a PPCD section to serve, uh, to serve those students. Um, with the additional sections that we need, 
to serve our pre-K students, uh, five additional sections there, an additional kindergarten section, um, even our projected forecast and buying some extra to be uh, prepared, we are short of furniture sets and all of the manipulatives and classroom materials. Um, as you can well imagine, pre-K and kindergarten classrooms are busy places with lots of activities and centers and manipulatives um, for little hands uh, and little minds to be learning. So uh, with that, we would uh, request the, the permission to purchase additional classroom sets, uh, not to exceed uh, the $100,000 mark. We have an estimate. There's a little flux, though, as we continue to uh, you know, finalize the purchase numbers. That's going to give us a little wiggle room so that if we have an additional classroom that we need to add as we continue to have children qualify for PPCD and pre-K, that we would have flexibility to add those classrooms. <coughs> Board members, this item is marked for action. Is there a motion to be considered? Ms. Valenzuela? I move that we approve the pre-kindergarten and kindergarten school furniture and instructional um, supplies for purchase. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Valenzuela. Mr. Ramos raised his hand faster. So we'll have a second for Mr. Ramos. Is there any discussion? Does she, do we need to say not to exceed $100,000 in the motion or not? No. Okay. So all those in favor, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen, our next agenda item is number seven. And thank you, Ms. Warnock, for your presentation. Oh, sure. Our next agenda item is number seven, closed meeting and number seven A. Pursuant to section 551072 of the Texas Government Code Real Property, deliberation regarding potential purchase of real property both improved and unimproved land located in the city of Irving, Dallas County, Texas. Audience members are welcome to remain in the boardroom as board members recess and move into the executive conference room, room number 150 for deliberations. The time is now 814. This meeting is recessed. We are back in, on the record in an open session having returned from closed session. The time is now 853 PM. Board members, our next agenda item is number 8A, consider approval of matters discussed in closed meeting regarding real property. And this item is marked for action. Is there a motion to be made at this time? Well, with no motion, we'll move on to item number nine, our next agenda item, comments from board members regarding posted agenda items. Board members, do you have any comments to make regarding our agenda, Mr. Shackman? In the uh, presentation that we uh, you shared with us and also in our pre-meeting, um, Dr. Warnock, you uh, thanked the board for having the vision to uh, add pre-K and those pieces. But I think this board wants to be on record as saying we appreciate so much the hard work of our staff. Uh, these increasing attendance numbers speak to quality programming. They speak to uh, quality instruction, and there's a whole bunch of things from communications and all that's gone into that. And uh, I, for one, applaud those efforts, and that's the trend that we want to see happening. And please, for whatever you can do, let people know um, that this board is very appreciative and we're excited to see that there are great things happening in CFB. Thank you very much. We'll definitely share that with staff. Thank you, Mr. Shackman. Any other comments from board members? So, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our agenda, and we are adjourned at 8.54. Thank you all for...